For those of you following my projects, you have already seen how I updated the tender of my HO scale UP844 to look like the current day prototype. Now it is time to look at the locomotive to see what can be done to make your model look like the real thing. If this is the first time watching my channel, you can find links to previous projects including this tender in the comment section below. As noted in the previous 844 tender series, the locomotive is 74 years old as of 2018. During this time, technology, regulations, and operational requirements have evolved, resulting in the many changes and updates UP has incorporated over the years. This first part of the video series will focus on items more noticeable or easier to model. I will point out some areas where you can add even more detail to match the prototype. However, I may not go into significant detail when doing so. Starting from the front of the locomotive, the most noticeable difference between most models and the current day prototype is the removal of the red Mars light. The latest release from Atherin in early 2018 is correct for the current prototype and comes without this light. But if you have an older Atherin or another manufacturer's model, this is something you will want to remove. Removing the light and housing shouldn't be too hard. Most modelers will find filling and painting the resulting hole the most challenging. The hole can be filled with styrene and putty, then consider repainting the entire smoke box door so you don't have to fight matching the paint exactly in a small area. Any subtle difference in color from the smoke box door to the sides or top of the smoke box will not be noticeable. A much simpler item is to paint the inside of the bell a bright red color. Adding grab irons to the number boards and headlight housing is also an easy task. Staying at the front of the locomotive, consider adding flags. For the past several years, 844 has displayed flags at the front of the locomotive on every trip it has made. The U.S. flag is always on the engineer's side, however the fireman's flag side varies. Most of the time, the state flag where the locomotive is currently running is displayed. Modeling flags can be accomplished with a good photo, basic photo software, and printing on thin weight white paper. As you can see with the US flag here, there are many shapes the flag takes as it flutters in the wind. There is no right or wrong here other than to avoid a perfect rectangle as this is not a natural state for a fabric flag. You can take your own picture or download from the internet. The images used here I found on Google Images. The same goes for state flags. Since the steam crew changes out the flags as they travel through different states, you can also change out your farm inside flag. This is a bonus to those of you that like to take pictures or video of your model. By changing out the farm inside flag and changing your consist around, you can offer more variety in the images you take for your models. The most frequently traveled states are Wyoming, Colorado, Nebraska, and Kansas. In addition to your home state, of course, consider these four states as well as any state in between where you live and Wyoming. The flags are mounted on rods shaped and sized as shown here. The best material to model this will be with stiff piano or steel wire. Brass will bend too easy and styrene will not hold the shape. Moving back slightly from the front, there are many things you can do around the cylinders. First, make sure the lead truck wheels are painted per the prototype. The base color should match the base color of the main drivers. Most black paints will work well here and use white to trim the center and the rims of the wheels. While you have the paintbrush out, paint the ends of the cylinders. The prototype is chrome plated, however chrome paint may be hard to find, so any similar shiny metal paint without metal flakes will work. You will want to top this off with a gloss coat so it is nice and shiny. Next, you can paint the tops of the valves shown here. The prototype is brass, but I have found gold paint to work just as well as brass paint. The last item to paint here is the red portion on the lubricators. There is additional equipment, valves, placards, and piping in this area, not included on most models, that can be added and painted appropriately. The largest piece is a reservoir for lubrication and is the same on both sides. A foot plate at the rear of both cylinders is used to aid the crew in reaching the lubricator. Additionally, there is piping and valves that fill the space between the air pumps and cylinders. Note the red valve handles. Wire and small rod will work well to replicate this. There is also a large chain that connects the front of the lead truck to the pilot. Moving further back, the rims of the main driver should be painted white if not already done so. 
Next, there are two light bulbs on each side under the running boards. The prototype currently uses CFL bulbs surrounded by heavy gauge wire guards. There is also additional piping and valves under the running boards of both sides that can be added to match the current prototype. Most models have some, but not all of these details. On both sides above the firebox, the areas called out here are the same color as the front and rear of the cylinders. Now we are to the cab, and first on my list is to completely remove the side windows. The pictures you see here show how the UP steam crew almost always has the side windows fully open while operating the locomotive. There are three main reasons for this, with visibility being number one. You can't see much out the front cab windows, so the crew leans out the side windows to gain more visibility. Second is to better hear what the locomotive is doing. No computers here, you have to listen to a steam locomotive to operate it properly. And the third is for ventilation. Remember, 844 is generally a fair weather locomotive running from late spring through late fall when ambient temperatures are cool to hot. Even with a 40 degree ambient temperature, ventilation will be appreciated when wearing the necessary crew clothing while sitting behind a firebox burning at 2000 degrees and a boiler full of superheated steam. Most people don't realize that there are also side vents on the cab, which are almost always in the open position. Some models of 844 have open doors on the rear of the cab, but most models I have seen have the doors closed. At this point, you already know that I'm going to tell you to remove the doors, and I probably don't have to tell you why. To be specific, remove the molded in doors that are in the closed position. You can make new doors and add them back in the open position. And if the windows and doors are open, it is a great time to work on the interior now that there are more opportunities for it to be seen from the outside. There are many videos on YouTube showing the interior of the cab, so use these to guide you. On the roof of the cab, there are a firecracker and Sinclair antenna, as well as a large roof vent. Most manufacturers do have the vent as a moving part, so you probably won't have to do much there. Just remember to open it when running your locomotive. Below the cab, there are many opportunities to bring your model up to date. Many things can be replicated with styrene or brass. Just compare your model to pictures like these to fill in the open spaces. This is by no means a complete list of everything you can do to your model to make it look like the real locomotive. Hopefully what you have seen here will get you to look at current photos and videos of the prototype, compare them to your model, ask yourself what differences exist, and what you can do to make your model look more realistic. In the second part of this series, I will show all of the updates I have made to my model of 844. Don't forget to look in the comment section for links to 844's modernized tender, in addition to my other projects, mostly focused on the UP Heritage Fleet. While you are there, go ahead and subscribe to keep up with my latest projects. Thanks for watching.